In this video, I'll show you how to upgrade the memory and or hard drive in your Mac Mini G4. The first order of business is to make sure you actually have a Mac Mini G4. So to find out, click your Apple icon and then click About This Mac. When the information box comes up, look here to find the processor type. If it says PowerPC G4, then you have the right video here. If it says any sort of Intel processor, then you need my other video which you can find a link in the description below. Okay, next order of business is to figure out how much memory you have now. The same information box will tell you how much memory you have. If it says one gigabyte, then you're out of luck because that's the most you can put in a Mac Mini G4. If it shows anything less than that, such as 512 megabyte or 256 megabyte, then you can upgrade to one gigabyte. If you want to upgrade, you'll need to buy a single stick of 184 pin DDR memory. It will not be DDR2 or DDR3, but should be advertised just as regular DDR. Also make sure it is desktop memory and not laptop memory. Here's what desktop memory looks like, and here's what laptop memory looks like. So you'll want to start by turning the computer upside down. A lot of people will say to use a credit card, but I can never get this to work and I just wind up destroying the card. So what I use is two flat tip screwdrivers. I start by putting the first one in and then holding that spot open while I insert the second screwdriver a little bit further down. Then I just keep doing this all of the way around. At some point, you should be able to lift the top off. If all you want to do is the memory module, then you're in luck. This is as far as you need to go. You can see where the module is and it's pretty easy to take out. If you want to do the hard drive, then keep watching. I should mention that this unit also requires the older style IDE hard drives. Sometimes they're referred to as PATA, such as Parallel ATA. Sometimes they're referred to as IDE or EIDE. But you'll know by looking at the connector. If it has a lot of little pins like this, then it's the right drive for your computer. If it has a little card edge connector on it like this, it's the wrong thing. It's also worth mentioning there are no capacity limitations that I am aware of. Any size drive you can find that will fit this computer should work. Check this spot right here. This unit doesn't have an airport antenna, but if yours does, you'll need to remove it first. Next, you'll need to take out these three screws. Here's the first one. You may need a magnet to remove these once they're loose. Here's the next one. And finally, here's the last one. You should be able to pretty much lift this whole top section up. It may take a little force because there's a card edge connector that holds it down. So turn this piece upside down and you should see the actual hard drive. You'll need to remove this fan first. You'll need to remove this screw, this one, and this one. Then you can lift the fan out. This might be a good time to use some compressed air and clean this thing out. Stick a Phillips screwdriver through this access hole and remove this screw. Then get this one over here. Then turn it around and get these two on the other side. you should be able to remove the drive now. And here we have it. 